Like many people out there, I use Google Photos as the set it and forget it type app. I use it to automatically back up my photos and never really touch it again unless I need to access a specific memory. The thing is, Google Photos offers so much more and as a long time user with over 17,000 photos, I'm getting pretty tired of using the bare minimum and I realize I want to be more of an expert. If you feel the same, then this video was definitely for you as I share eight incredibly useful features that should help you get the most out of Google Photos. Number one, their powerful search engine. For our first feature, I wanna start out with something very useful but often overlooked, and that's Google's incredibly powerful search engine built right into the experience. This becomes really helpful, especially if you have a large library like mine. I'm talking over 17,000 photos over an eight year period. To me, I think the search engine in Google Photos is exactly what I'm looking for to easily find specific photos with vague information. As most of us know, we can search using basic keywords words like beach, dog, or birthday party that typically deliver good results thanks to the machine learning algorithm, but the search engine can do a lot more than just keywords. You can search by recognized faces if they've been previously labeled. You can search for specific objects like a photo of a dish you took in the past, certain scenes like mountains, downtown of your city, or concerts for example, and you can even search for text within an image thanks to their built-in optical character recognition technology. On top of that, you can also search by location or or specific date range if need be. And something I learned very recently is that you can combine multiple search terms. So if you're like me, you can type something like Jordan at the beach, which will show relevant results. As you can see, I haven't been to the beach in a while, so maybe it's about time. <laughs> These are just a few examples of what's capable within the search function of Google Photos. I'm sure I missed a lot more examples, trust me, but I think this is an underrated feature that I wish I was using a lot sooner as it's a great time saver and is something not very many cloud stores services are able to offer. Two, Magic Eraser, Magic Editor, and various AI tools. This next feature is more of a reminder than anything else, but Google's Magic Eraser, Magic Editor, and their various AI tools are another feature you should be trying out when possible. I bring this up because as of April 2024, Magic Eraser plus a handful of additions are rolled out to everyone regardless of if you have a Pixel phone or a Google One subscription like you would have needed in the past. That means you can access Magic Eraser, including its camouflage mode, plus its various AI tools like Photo Unblur, Portrait Blur, Sky Suggestions, HDR effects, and much more on devices running Android 8.0 and up, iOS devices on version 15 and up, and Chromebook Plus models running Chrome OS 118 and up. There's also some interesting developments on Magic Editor, which was previously exclusive to the Pixel 8 series as it's now become available to all Pixel devices, Samsung devices, and possibly other manufacturers as well. For those who don't know, Magic Editor is Google's easy to use AI power editing tool that lets you move, resize, or erase parts of a photo, kind of like a more advanced version of Magic Eraser. Like I said, this was originally exclusive to the Pixel 8 series, but now I can use it on my Z Fold 5, my OnePlus 12, or even devices as old as the Pixel 6a. Three, Google Lens Integration. This one I found a new appreciation for recently, which is Google Lens Integration. I think this one is more of a well-known feature, but I wish I started using it sooner, specifically within Google Photos, as I can identify pretty much anything, which is very useful, especially if you have a massive library spanning over the course of many years. I think we all know it's good at identifying products, landmarks, plants, and allows you to copy text from photos, but a lesser known feature is it can give you step by step instructions to solve math problems and diagrams via its homework help feature. If there's any students watching the video, let me know if you found this feature helpful. That said, Google Lens as a whole is definitely very underrated and I'll be going out of my way to use it a lot more often. In fact, I have found one really good use case for me, which is identifying items in old vintage family photos. By the way, I do have a tip on that later on, but it's very interesting because I can get some solid information on items definitely not made anymore and it's exciting to uncover these pieces of the past. Four, AI-generated memories. While we're talking about the more well-known features, I did want to quickly mention the AI-generated memories feature. I know it's pretty obvious considering there's a dedicated tab on the main screen, but I'll admit I haven't used this much until recently. If you haven't checked it out before like me, this memories tab uses AI to curate photos from a group of photos taken from a family event, trip, or based on the people included in those photos. It automatically curates photos in a scrapbook-like timeline, which I'd say has a nice UI and is 
very user friendly. Google Photos uses AI to identify important events like trips, holidays, and people creating a collection of photos and videos related to a specific moment. And there's an option to create a link so you can share these memories with others or even port them into Google's physical scrapbook feature, which we will talk about later. Personally, I like that this timeline puts these photos together automatically as you take pictures throughout your day, and it's great for rediscovering those moments you may have forgotten about. Five, video editing adjustments. Another useful feature that kind of blew me away is Google Photos built-in video editor. Now I know a lot of apps can edit videos, but having it right there in Google Photos is what makes it so convenient. To me, I think it's a hidden gem, and if you're a casual user, you might not have had the chance to play around with it yet. As expected, you get the usual trim, crop, and export individual frame options, but the adjustment menu is what really caught my eye. I was impressed because it's really simple to use and it gives you a deep range of customization. There's about 13 different options you can tweak from contrast to HDR effects to skin tones, saturation, shadows, and many more that can completely change the look of a video. And you can tap to hold on that video to see the changes in real time. It's really good for new videos, but if you have older clips that you want to touch up, up, being able to do so right from Google Photos is a really nice option. 6. The Photo Scan Add-on by Google Photos Speaking of hidden gems, there is a companion app to Google Photos called PhotoScan that is really useful for preserving physical photos like Polaroids or photographic prints. Lately, I've been digging through some old family photos and the PhotoScan app from the Play Store works surprisingly well. The app is pretty easy to use, only requiring you to snap a photo from a few different angles where the built-in tech removes glare and stitches those images together for a complete picture. Within the app, there's the ability to crop and rotate as well, where the final product will be automatically uploaded to Google Photos, where you can use a combination of the editing tools we talked about earlier to touch things up. As a whole, it's a seamless, convenient, and no-nonsense way to bring your physical photos into the digital side of things, and it's a valuable tool, to say the least. 7. Automatic Album Sharing Getting close to the end of this video here, let's talk about a smaller, maybe lesser-known feature where you can create a shared album. You can access this via the Share logo in the top right of Google Photos where you're offered to create a title, create a description, and add that person or pet that you would like to focus the album on. Once that's done, you can create a link to share the album as you see fit. It's great because you can enable automatic updates for the album, which means whenever Google's facial recognition identifies said person or pet, those photos will be automatically added. I wouldn't say this is a 100% must-use feature, but if you're part of a family, this is a no-brainer to keep up on vacations, family events, pet photos, or or special occasions. Eight, physical scrapbook prints. For our last feature, I wanna talk about physical scrapbook prints right from Google Photos. As a disclaimer, the one I'm showing you is really old, so I don't need any comments about it, but I did wanna show you because I do find this to be a helpful, underrated feature. In my opinion, the strongest aspect is how easy it is to put together. It's a service built right into the Google Photos experience where you can easily select from your library of photos, customize the book, and have a high quality printed copy delivered to your door. The book themselves are well made, at least the hardcover version that I have here, with crisp, vibrant prints and a small amount of customization for different styles and sizes. Google Photos even offers curated suggestions based on themes or specific trips, making it a good starting point for a well thought out gift. Men, there's no sugarcoating it here. If you use Google Photos and you don't know what to get your mom, spouse, or girlfriend for a special occasion, this is the easiest, low effort, high impact gift you can get. They look great. It's beyond convenient and quite affordable, so if you don't know what to get, at least start here and then come back, leave a comment, and thank me later. At the end of the day, Google Photos is definitely a lot more capable than I was giving it credit for over the years, and I hope after watching this video, you feel the same. For a free service, there is a surprising amount of depth, and compared to other cloud storage services, I find Google Photos has the best mix of features, convenience, and capability, and now that I'm an expert, I feel I can maximize my usage here. If there's any feature in this video that you didn't know about or realize you should have been using way more often, leave a comment below and let me know. What's impacted you the most? What caught your attention? And what made you realize you're not quite the expert you thought you were? Myself and the Android community would love to know. In the meantime, my friends, I'm getting out of here. Before I do, huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. I know I say it often, but it's true. Damien and I are working so hard to deliver the best, most helpful and Android content on the platform, and the support of our channel members helps us reach that goal. Simply put, we love you guys, and thank you so much for supporting our journey. With that said, 
I'm getting out of here as there's always more work to do. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.